Welcome back to Rise and Shine with Dr. Sunny. I'm joined now by my sister, Michelle Chantains of Queens, New York. As I mentioned earlier, Michelle is the reason for my season that resulted in the opportunity for me to be a co-author of the Voice of Hope book collaboration. Welcome, Michelle, my sweet sister. Hello, glad to be here with you. Wonderful. Let me set the stage for our audience. You and I were on a FaceTime call and we love that app on the Apple iPhone because not only can we hear each other, but we can see each other as well. And we usually FaceTime every Sunday after church. However, in this particular call, in the first few minutes, you seem to have trouble finishing a sentence. Talk about that. Well, uh, the call almost didn't happen because I wasn't feeling that well and I had a headache. And so I said, oh no, I'm not going to bother calling Sunny because she's all bright and bubbly and sunny and I just don't feel like talking. But, and I laid the phone down, but then something told me, call you. So I called and as you said, you knew something was wrong and you said, what's wrong? And I said, I don't know, I wasn't feeling well. And I asked my girlfriend sitting next to me in church to pass me a bear. And then I stayed stuck on that word. And so I didn't really realize what was happening. You, on the other hand, on the end of face um, timing, saw what was going on with me and realized I was in distress, not knowing that I was going through or having an actual stroke right in front of your eyes, right in front of your face. Your stroke happened in November 2018, just a few days before Thanksgiving. While you were in the hospital, what was going through your mind? Well, I knew that my daughter from Chicago was coming in and visiting and it was the holiday time and I felt like confined being in the hospital and I just wanted to go home, but my progress during the course of those five days in the hospital wasn't progressing as fast. And so all I knew is I wanted to be able to uh, go home and be with family. But then also I was thankful during that Thanksgiving season just to be alive because I know people go through things much worse, have strokes that really debilitate them. So all in all, I did have family, I did have friends, I did have church family coming to visit. And of course you, a big sis, my Shiro, calling and checking and FaceTiming with me just to make sure I was doing okay. Yes, and just talk just a little bit more about family and friends being part of your caregiving team because my concern was I was a thousand miles away. How was I going to help you? And there were certain people who made sure that you got the care that you need, including our parents who came up for a month to take care of their daughter. Yes, yes. Well, uh, my son lives with me, but he was at the job, so he wasn't home. My daughter was preparing to come in for Thanksgiving holiday, but that was going to be a couple of days afterwards. I do have friends from the church. I'm one of the leaders of the Gideonites Prayer Ministry, a facilitator. And actually on that Sunday, I was in the side wing on my task, on my post, praying for others during the church service. But I knew I wasn't feeling well. And then a couple of my friends were sitting in the choir loft trying to get my attention, texting me, but of course I don't look at my phone during the church service unless I'm on a Bible app because they saw me holding my head down and just swaying from side to side and they were trying to get my attention, but I wasn't um, really cognizant of that and everything I was going through, I just knew that I had a headache. But besides that, I have, as I said, the prayer ministry, I have some family friends, I have my girlfriend of over 50 years, who once she knew um, I was in the hospital, took a personal day to, to come out and relieve my other sister Shay from the hospital and spend the whole time with me uh, to go through tests. I have my aunt and uncle who were finishing up with a church service and wanted to come out, but I did tell them I had someone there with me. Um, my daughter Tiana immediately changed her flight plan to make sure that she can come in earlier than she was supposed to. And and uh, my friend, my other friends as well, who came to check for me as well. I'm so happy that you have this caregiving team and it didn't just happen the week that you were ill, it has continued on and I'm, I'm happy for you. Yes. So how has this illness, because you suffer both from a stroke as well as heart disease, how has it changed your life? Because in the book, you talk about it being your new normal. 
Well, well, my new normal is taking the medication at a specified time by the doctors. Also during that time, they felt for to make sure that this doesn't happen to me again, to try to prevent a heart attack or a stroke, they inserted a device called a loop recorder. So I have that that they're monitoring me. I have an electrophysiologist who uh, handles um, the device monitoring. I was assigned a caseworker around a month ago. So they still have people checking in on me. And so going to the doctor really has changed a lot. But one of the best things about it is with the loop recorder, I don't have to go in as often because they, I upload, or rather this information is uploaded through the monitoring device that is at the side of my bed every night at midnight. And so it goes directly to the hospital, a life day hospital, where they're monitoring me. And if they see anything um, erratic regarding my arrhythmia, they contact me and say, what was going on? How are you feeling? And everything like that. And so just making sure that I take the medicine um, each time. So on my phone, I have an alarm and it goes off seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, 7 p.m. in the evening, and then again at 10 o'clock so I can take the specified doses. So that's one of the things that I know I have to do. My new normal of taking the medicine. And how has your faith impacted your recovery? Well, I know that God is great. I know that he is a healer. And so I do have the Gideon Knights Prayer Ministry who are constantly praying for me in season and out of season. I have my pastor, Reverend Victor Tyrone Paul Sr. from Calvary Church, who always is placing a text or he checks on me. And um, when I do come to church service, because there was a while I wasn't going to church, when I was there, he would make uh, mention, he was glad to see our prayer lady, which he nicknamed me there. So just keeping the faith and knowing that what God has done before, that he's a healer, he's a way maker, he's my light in the darkness. I know who he is and I know if I just hold on to that and, and keep the faith that things will turn around. So whether this is my new normal, then God creates all things new because that's what the word of God says. And so there's times when I get a little dismayed because I am a uh, or was right now I'm on leave as the leader of the prayer ministry, even though they do call me as an advisor from time to time. I just know that God continues to uphold me with his right hand of righteousness. And so I just make it dismayed from time to time. All those times that I pray for so many others, and I know the word of God, but sometimes you could waver in your faith a little bit. So I think of the word that comes out of the book of Mark in 9, Verse 23 through 25, it says, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because sometimes, even though this isn't as bad as how others have, I'm used to being on the go. And sometimes it has slowed me down. And I can't do some of the things that I'm used to doing. And so I have to think of all those things that led up to the stroke. Because there were several warning signs, which I kind of ignored. And then once um, I had the stroke, I did a, a lot of uh, research on the internet and uh, looking up on the symptoms. And every time the doctors would diagnose me for certain things regarding my heart or this um, stroke that I had, the TIA, then I would just Google it just to find out more and more and more and see what I could do. My son, I'll tell you that uh, he's not too keen on all the medicine. And so he wants to go the health, um, the health route. And so he's uh, constantly giving me uh, these health smoothies and trying to make sure I change my diet and eat the right type of food. So um, my new normal is watching my diet as well. So that takes a little getting used to since I'm a serving girl at heart and I love to eat certain things, especially when my mom comes and visits. But I do know that I have to help myself as well. And finally, I know that you are on your own recovery, but... Being that you are a prayer warrior, what words of encouragement might you have for someone who's going through um, their own illness and struggles? What could you say to them, my dear sister? Well, as people who like to give care, let someone who cares about you give some care to you. Don't try to shut them out because I know there's times. 
excuse me, you know, that I may do it. So if I can encourage somebody else to say, if someone wants to help you, if a big sis a thousand miles away wants to give help and make suggestions to make life easier for me, let them, let them in. Don't let them out, but let them in. Share the light, let them share the light with you. Let them encourage you with the hope because we know that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And that, with him upholding us with his right hand of righteousness, we know that we can conquer anything together. Thank you so much for sharing. And, and you thank you, thank you. Your authenticity, my sister. On the last page of my chapter, I got this uh, scripture from you and I put it in the book. And I said, as I continue in my caregiving journey, my prayer for my sweet sister, Michelle, and your loved ones comes from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope. And my sister, Michelle, I am overflowing with hope that God will continue to bless you. And yes, thank you. Long, and that I pray that you get better and better. And I'm looking forward to this weekend's FaceTime call and know that I love you. Okay. Love you more, sis. Thank okay. you, big sis. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, everyone. Bye-bye. The Voice of Hope, Inspiring Untold Stories book is for caregivers who seek to reduce the stress that come with caring for an ill or disabled loved one while living a life of purpose. I'm blessed to be one of 12 co-authors with stories we hope will inspire and help you to overcome the burdens of your caregiving journey. To purchase a copy, go online to drsunny.voiceofhopebook.com, all lowercase, I'll spell it out, D-R-S-U-N-N-Y dot voiceofhopebook.com. That's all the time we have on this edition of Rise and Shine with Dr. Sunny. Thank you for watching or listening. I'd like to thank my guest, Dr. Heather Tucker, founder and CEO of Another Level Living Incorporated, and Michelle Chance Haynes, my sister and manager of Calvary Baptist Church Senior Housing in New York. The mission of WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network is to empower CBN broadcasters to share amazing stories of our guests and give you information that will educate, empower, and encourage you. Our shows and podcasts are our ministry. They are seen and heard around the world. As a result, we get the chance to send a message of hope to people in adverse life situations who may not be aware of resources available to them. As you watch and listen to our shows and feel we have added value to your life and you believe in our mission, then we'd appreciate if you help us with our goals to continue our broadcast by making a donation of any amount at wytv7.org. I look forward to connecting with many of you who tune in to Rise and Shine with Dr. Sunny Mondays at 8 a.m. Central or listen anytime on one of our many podcast platforms. You can also reach me at sunnyfritz.com or my Facebook page, I Rise and Shine. I'm Dr. Sunny. Remember, it's your time to rise and shine.